I'm using the new Travel and Sketch Limited Edition Palette by Art Toolkit in collaboration with Traveler's Company. This is the first one I've purchased from Art Toolkit because I really love the combination of this Explore Palette Plus. It's watercolors by uh, Van Gogh, Royal Talons Van Gogh. And so all I did here was sketch out a map of one of the new mall areas where we've been hanging out lately. It was built during COVID, so we're just kind of now starting to get to explore this area and eat at some of the restaurants. And I've been wanting to write down and draw different areas and restaurants that we um, go to because, you know, the demographic of the area changes so much and so quickly over the years. And this is something I had always wished I had kind of journaled is keeping up with different places that we've eaten at over the years and where they were located. So all I did was print off these pictures directly onto some copy paper. I used the print to size app so that I could get the exact sizes of the images that I wanted to. I'm going to use this R12 travel brush. Um, it's by Rosemary and Co. And I'm going to try to mix some grays and some browns by using some of the clues that they give us on the back of this card. So it's been really handy to keep this card inside of my sketchbook, my traveler's notebook, um, along with the palette so that I have like a permanent swatch card with me all the time. Now here I'm just going to wet my palette. This is the first time that I've used this palette and believe it or not, even just these two blots of drops of color um, of water is almost too much per palette. These watercolors are very creamy and they activate very easily. They are highly pigmented, especially that phthalo blue. And um, I just found that I really didn't need that much water as I thought I was going to need. So here I'm trying to mix up a pavement color. So I'm using the Burnt Sienna mixed with the Ultramarine, I believe it is. This was a clue from April Wu and a, an art toolkit on their um, little video they had at, for the release of this palette. That was a really nice clue she gave on some on some mixing. So if the color is a little bit too brown, just go in and add a little bit more of the ultramarine along with more water and you'll find that you'll get this nice pavement gray color. And it ends up being just the perfect shade um, for these highways and for sidewalks and things like that. So I really love how this gray turned out. Now you are going to notice some smudging of my ink. If I had truly used just carbon black ink by Platinum, it would not have smeared. But what happened was I forgot that I had a regular fountain pen ink in this same pen prior to loading um, it with this new ink. So I have a feeling that some of that black ink was still left in the feed of this fountain pen. So that's why there is some blurring of the words. Otherwise, it really wouldn't have done this. Um, that platinum carbon ink is pretty good about not smearing after it's, you know, been drawn and dried. So it didn't smear too bad. And, you know, being that this is just the pavement, that's totally fine. <laughs> um, so that is why those colors are coming up just a little bit when you see me painting out the roads. But they're still very legible. I can read them just fine. And it's not really the accent of the page. I just wanted to make sure to put a map of the location because even as we speak, they are still building in this area um, where this is located. And a lot of those buildings that I have lightly drawn out in pencil underneath are still under construction right now. And so I'm sure we'll be back to this area in the future and I'll draw those out later 
on another date. Another tip that April Wu from Penguins Creative gave is that the phthalo blue is very staining. So she uses a little square like this one for the phthalo blue um, so that it doesn't stain the white areas. So I'm just watering it down a lot in order to just make this water area that is, um, I guess it's like a retaining pond um, between the highway and the mall area. Um, also, there's a couple of water fountain areas between the movie theater and the restaurant where we ate. I'll put some clips of different things that I recorded while we were there um, here as well. And then I'm just going to use some other colors straight like this sap green. All I did here as well is just put it directly on the palette and watered it down and I'm just using it directly to paint out the grassy areas. So there's a lot of parking areas um, because a lot of these buildings are pretty big and they can hold a lot of people. They have a grassy area right here between the Shields and some of the other restaurants um, where, they where they have outdoor concerts during the summer. And inside of the Shields, they have like a little aquarium thing that you kind of walk through, through the main doors. And there's also a very small indoor Ferris wheel. Also on the outside, there's a large Ferris wheel on the other side of the Andretti carts area. So I'm just trying to make some of these buildings different colors. Um, so as I label them, these are kind of, this is where the Andretti as well as the Barley and Board restaurant are um, that we went to as well as the little coffee shop that we went to. So I'm just trying to kind of accent these out in different colors um, along with the movie theater. So this is the main section where we were at for this particular weekend. And so I thought I would journal about each one of these little spots as well. So here I'm just taking the burnt umber and mixing it with a little bit of that yellow ochre to get a really nice coffee type of color. So it is super hot here in Texas right now. We've already been hitting many days, well over a hundred. I wanna say last week with the heat index, it reached as high as 117. It was pretty crazy. So um, we got some iced coffees. I got a Frappuccino. My husband got a cold brew and I thought it was kind of cool. Um, they have these little, I forget what these things are called in beer terminology, but when you go to a brewery, at least here in our area, you can often get these little tinted glass brown jugs to take um, beer on tap. You can take it home inside of these little glass jars. Um, but here at this coffee shop, you can take their cold brew coffee home with you in one of these. So I'm just trying to leave some white areas where the light is reflecting off of the, um, off of the top of this jar. And then I'll just fill it in with the rest of this little mixture that I made between the um, burnt umber and the yellow ochre. So now I'll start using some Tombow markers. This is the brush tip. I'm using the red to highlight the areas that I'm going to be journaling about on the actual page. These are marking the actual places that we went to that day. And then I'm going to use the other end of this Tombow marker to just write down the name of the store. Um, since I have this arrow pointing to it and where the journaling is going to be, I just figured I'd write the store name over here instead of on the building itself. So the same goes for the logo down here. Um, the Grandscape logo has these exact colors um, to highlight all of its areas. So I used this turquoise blue um, for one of them 
and then the I guess it's like a I guess it's orange yellow orange for the second section and then like a lime green for the third petal and then the actual title itself is colored in in black on their website but instead of making it just completely black um, in my journal I just went ahead and used a gray Tombow marker to fill that one in. So now I'm going to use the Micron in a 0 0.01. It's a very um, fine pigment marker. I love journaling with this because it's such a fine point. I can make very small journal lines and then I can just journal all the stories um, by drawing arrows from the actual buildings down to the actual description of each of the restaurants or stores that we went to. So now I'm going back to my tried and true gummy racer. This one is from Faber-Castell. Um, I just love it because I can blot the eraser on the paper and it really picks up that graphite. So here it is all finished. Um, I really enjoyed doing this along with the map. I wanna do more of these, of mapping the location um, along with the description. So I'm just going to, since I have this blank spot here in the middle, I felt like I could label one more spot, which is the Andretti um, carts area, which was really cute to watch with the kids. So I'm just going to label that also with a Tombow marker. Now, what really impressed me about this paper is that all of this media that I used did not soak through to the other side of the page or to the other papers in this Traveler's Notebook um, insert. So all of these, including the pigment pen and the Tombow markers did just fine. They did not leak through to the other side. So because I love how this gray mixed, I'm just going to leave my palette out to dry. Um, since I'm at home, I have that time. So I'm just going to let it sit here until it dries and then I can reactivate and use those colors again in the future. Now I noticed that there were some stickers that I had in this pouch that I could have actually used on this layout and I kind of wish I had used at least one of them. So what I decided to do now is, since I have the um, sticker release insert in here by B-Sides and Rarities, I'm going to go ahead and take all these stickers off and put them on this sticker release paper. That way I can flip through them and see what I have and add them to a layout early on so that I don't forget what stickers I have. When they're stuffed away in an envelope like that, I forget what I have and like this one here, I could have used it on that layout just as a nice little piece of ephemera to add on the page. So these will come off of here very easily. You'll see um, when I readjust some of these, um, how easily they they come off and back on onto this type of paper. What's really cute about these is a lot of them have gold foiling. Um, this was a limited edition release. It's called the Diner Edition. I got it on TravelersCompanyUSA.com. That's their USA um, website. They do have a Japanese website as well. Um, but this one I was able to buy here in the States. When you buy from that website, you don't have to pay as much on shipping um, as you would if you had purchased some of the items uh, from Japan. I want to say the cheapest shipping from Japan that I've been seeing lately is about $22. Whereas if you buy... I don't remember if it's seventy-five or a hundred dollars on Travelers Company USA. You can get, you can still get free shipping within the U.S. So I try to wait till there's a few items that I really love. Of course, sometimes it's hard with these limited edition items. You kind of have to grab them while they have them. Um, so this is the diners insert that came with this particular limited edition. 
It's that standard Traveler's Company paper. And like I said before, it held up really well to all the media that I used on here. Those pencil lines are what's coming in the future. Those buildings aren't built yet. And then I just finished it off with this stamp, which I'm on the last year of 2023 on this roller stamp. All right, well, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. I'll try to make more like it. All my supplies are listed below in the comments, and I'll see you on the next one.